After Mindy asked me to share with you all, I asked God what He wanted me to focus on, and immediately I heard Him say, tell them to pray. I knew that was the key because it is the key to everything we do in life if we want to do things of eternal value. So let's look at three aspects of prayer as it relates to us as coaches' wives. First, we need to ask God to help us be the supportive wife that God wants us to be. The best thing that we can do for our husband is to model Christ's love for him. Christ's love is sacrificial, so if we are to emulate his character, then we will sacrifice. We'll be willing to make those sacrifices that are necessary. Many of you have children at home you're taking care of while your husband is coaching. Many of you are alone at home taking care of the home while he's coaching. There are many sacrifices that we're called to make in order for our husband to fulfill his role. And with God's help, we can do this as our service to God because as he is used as a coach, we can be used as his wife. So pray often that God will help you be the supportive wife that he wants you to be. And then also ask God to help you do the things that he wants you to do to enhance your husband's role as a coach. A few suggestions there are uh, doing things for the team, helping serve the team meals, uh, talking with players, getting to know them, encouraging them. Uh, I see, I, I think that we, as we see our role as the encourager, the, the players need to see that. We need to encourage them. And as we see in Psalm 4, 3, and 5, but God knows, but know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him, offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. So what are right sacrifices for us? It includes whatever we need to sacrifice to give up to help our husband be the, the, husband, the coach that he needs to be. And so in order to, to do this, we need to lean into God being totally dependent on Him to fill us with His desire, His wisdom, and His love and character. God knows our hearts. He knows when we get tired, and He knows when we need an extra portion of His help. That's when we take time to take a time out, go to our place of prayer, kneel before the Lord, and pray. If you have a life passage that you have used to guide your life, then that's a good time to pray that. If you don't have a life passage, uh, I'll share with you mine. Mine is Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. And when I go, when I get tired or frustrated, just need that extra help, and, and all the time I need that extra help any, anyway, but I'll go before him on my knees and pray this, pray Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 to him asking for him to help me do that. And that, it goes like this. Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, lay us, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with endurance the race set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising its shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. You know, when I think about the, the, um, the phrase, looking to Jesus, I think about what Jesus did. He lived his life teaching about him, about God, and then he gave his life as a sacrifice for all of us. And so one time I was reading that passage and praying that before God, and the words for the joy just jumped up off the page to me because it, I imagined the joy that Jesus must have had when he ascended to heaven and was seated at the right hand of, the, of God. Can you imagine his just, just sitting there going, it is done. It is finished. I have run the race set for me. And because of that, all humanity can have a relationship with the Father because of what I did. Now, our, our goal is not nearly as lofty as Jesus's, but it's just as important for us to fulfill it because it's the plan God set for us. Before we were ever created, He set for us the race He wanted us to run. And He knew that we could not do it on our own. He didn't intend, us for, intend for us to. So he knew that with his help, we could run the race that he intends for us to run. So if you get tired and just in any time, whether you get tired or not, you need that guidance. That God is there to help you. He is there to help you encourage your husband and support your husband. So you don't get caught, down, caught up in what about me? Because it's all about what God wants. We all have our, our plan, our place, our role for that to happen. 
Second, let's ask God to help our husbands be the coaches he wants them to be, the godly man he's called them to be. After all, God knows what our husbands need more than we do. So ask God to give your husband a rich, vibrant relationship with him and to, have to give him the desire to spend time with God, allowing God to mold him into the coach he wants him to be. A great verse to use here comes from Proverbs 2, 6 that says, For the Lord gives wisdom, from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. So ask God to give him wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in his job. In his job of teaching the, the players their, their skills, their strategies, but also in teaching players life, life skills, and especially in how to have a relationship with Christ because sports will go away one day. They will outgrow eventually being able to play those sports, but their life, their life, their relationship with the Lord will last for eternity. So we want, we want to pray that our husbands have an impact on their athletes for eternal values and not just, um, just sports, even though sports are important, but eternity is much more. Um, there's a verse in, <clears throat> in, Hebrew, in Ephesians 4, 1 and 2, that says um, that has that offers a prayer that we can say that that our husbands are through God's help able to walk worthy of the calling to which they are called with all lowliness and gentleness with long suffering bearing with one another in love. So a humble heart appeals to God because it's evidence that we realize we can't do things on our own. We need His help. My, my husband's favorite verse is Colossians 3.23 that says, Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. Let's pray also that our husbands fulfill their jobs as coach in this manner with their whole hearts and for God. Third, let's pray that we together as husband and wife are united as a team serving God together in these roles of coach and coach's wife. My favorite part of our marriage is serving alongside my husband as a team. God gave us a prime opportunity to use this during this past football season. A player on our team was injured and it looked like it could have been very serious. As the paramedics were transferring him to the stretcher, Tommy came over to me and said he was going to follow the ambulance to the hospital and it was an hour away and asked if I would go with him. Well, I did, of course, and we were able to sit with the parents of this player in the ER praying with them, talking with them, encouraging them. And then we were able to celebrate with them and their son when a few hours later, later he walked out of the ER with injuries that were not nearly as serious as they could have been and thanking God for protecting him. So to wrap up, pray for God to enable you to be the coach's wife that he wants you to be and do the things that he wants you to do Pray for God to mold your husband into being the coach that he wants him to be. And pray that God uses the two of you as a powerful team that accomplishes more together than either of you could alone. Remind yourself often that you are running the race that God has set before you and that at the end of that race, there's a crown that will, crowns that you will place at the feet of Jesus, acknowledging that he is the one who enabled you to do it all. With this goal in mind, I would like to leave you with this one final verse from Romans, verses from Romans 15, 5 and 6. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for spending this time with me. My prayer is that God will bless you and your husbands in a mighty way as you serve Him together.